Day is cracking on. We have wool to sell and we have some grass work that we need to get done. Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to Big Bud Farm. So, last time we did a, a kind of a, a catch up episode, we got a great demand while we were doing that for wool. That is still going on, but the price is kind of stabilised now at uh, around 5,000 uh, per thousand litres. So, we're going to be selling our wool a little bit later, uh, but first we need to get some grass work done. So. We're going to jump into our shed here. We need a nice supply of hay. Oh, I'm going to need the other door open as well. There we go. And let's jump in to our big M. In, hook up to our trail lifter. There we go. And now we need to get these uh, shutters closed. There we go. And uh, we're just going to do some verges, basically. So um, you can see I've done some at the top end of the fields, but I haven't done them at the bottom end of the field, so we're going to make our way to the opposite end, and we're going to do the verges down there. They're really, really good sized verges as well, so we'll get quite a nice supply of grass off these two fields, and there's a couple of ways we could go about doing this when it comes to collecting it. We do have a 50,000 litre forage wagon. So we could kind of just scoop the grass up off the floor, or scoop the hay up off the floor once we've uh, once we've produced it. Or the other thing we could do is we could just make a load of bales, and then when we get back to the animal shed, we could shred the bales, and then use that to put them into our storage as a loose product. So we have a couple of different ways that we can approach this task. And I think what we might do is we might do one of each. So one of the sets of verges will do. Uh, with bales, the other one will do with uh, just the loading wagon. So you can kind of see the difference in that. So, it's going to take us a little while to get to the uh, area that we need to start mowing. Obviously we can only go 26 miles an hour and this is a very long field. So I will see you when we're all ready to get set up. Alright, so, here we are. Let's get ourselves kind of position. I've just disconnected on my. There we go. Up and fold. We need to lower our hay bob. And pressing the wrong button. So there we go. Turn it on. Lower. Turn on. And this is a nice, simple way of making hay using a big M. If we get too close, it won't cut. That should be fine. So you can see that the hay bob literally just teds the grass and keeps it in a nice, straight, neat little, uh, little windrow there, rather than if we were to attack this with a normal windrower it would just kind of send it all over the place and we would have a very messy uh, swath of hay that would probably need to be rowed again with this with this little uh, setup here we can make hay in a single go like this and keep it nice and neat and no mess no fuss very easy for us to then go and collect and deal with that afterwards It's a really, really efficient little setup like this, and I do like it. All right, let's make our turn. Now 
Now you can make reasonably tight turns and still kind of get everything, but see the tighter the turn, the more you start to slip a little bit because the distance between the uh, the toolbar, you know, the trail lifter, and the actual the length of the toolbar means that you know from where the grass is coming out at the back of the the mowers to the, where the uh, the grass feeds through the t the the hay bob, the longer that distance, then the more you're going to get some issues if you start making really, really tight turns. But you can make reasonably good, you know, fairly decent sized turns and still make sure that everything's tailored. You might just have to kind of tidy up a little bit at the end on the corners, but it's not a major issue. And of course, when you do get to a turn like this, you don't have to make a brutally tight turn. Nothing to stop you from just doing this, lifting your mowers, making a really, really tight turn, and getting back underway again. It's up to you whether you want to wait till you're in a perfectly straight line or start a little bit early as I did just there. But it's a really simplistic little setup this and it's really really effective. You can see just how much grass we're uh, producing or cutting in a single pass. You know, nice wide working width on top of that we're getting it all completely windrowed and tedded at the same time. This is just you know an incredibly incredibly efficient way of uh, getting hay all right there we go that's this set of verges done Ooh, I just need to quickly ted that last little touch of grass just there those weird little graphical glitches that you see on this map unfortunately sure what causes that. It does really snap you out at the moment, unfortunately. Right, let's lower that, let's turn it back on. There we go. Right. Off to the bottom of field four to do the verge over there as well. I do love the interior of this thing. It's really, really awesome in here. Yeah, really nicely laid out control system. I love the fact that we get a little display that pops up in the top right corner when we have something connected to the back. You know, it always shows a loading wagon picture, whether it's a loading wagon or a baler, or in our case, a trail lifter with a hay bob. You know, it always shows the same image, but it, it doesn't show it if we disconnect, you know, which is kind of a nice little touch. Uh, I do like the... Uh, the control board that you see on the right hand side you can see your uh, hours of usage in the machine you get a clock in the top corner which is actually an hour slow uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem to have accounted for daylight savings perhaps I don't know uh, you have your speed your RPM your cruise control speed which is always in kilometers per hour whether you're on miles per hour or not it's a little disappointing but yeah it's a, a minor little thing and then you have your fuel on the bottom screen, the amount of fuel that you have in your tank, the amount of fuel that you're using per hour, which obviously changes as you're activating the machine. Obviously, the uh, display for turning on the uh, the fans. And the other thing I really like as well, which I will show you, is, is the way you have to boot the system up the first time you get in it as well. So we'll get this positioned. That looks to be about right. And we'll just turn the engine off for a second. We'll jump out. Let everything power down. So you saw the armrest just go back up there. I'm going to jump back in. And there, we have to power the screens up. That's just, it's a really nice little touch. Obviously, we have you know a, a light for beacons, as you can see. Uh, we have uh, indicator lights on the console as well. It's, it's just a really nice machine. The only thing I don't like about this thing is the color. The colors are wrong. I don't know why the colours haven't translated across properly, but 
you know, we just don't have you know, the right shade of green, we don't have the right body colour. It just it's a little bit weird. But you can forgive those little niggles because this is just a fantastic piece of machinery. I remember when I played uh, Farming Sim 14 on the Vita, my first experience with Farming Sim. And we had a big M on that, and then we didn't have one on 15. And we didn't have one on 17, and then everyone was just crying out for big M mods. Oh, we're on the wrong field, aren't we? Alright, let's just carry on across. Probably should have lifted the, uh, the mowers. Never mind. This is the field that we're supposed to be on. So, whoops, a little bit too close. There we go. Forgot about field three there, in between fields two and four. A little bit careless. But now we're going to uh, whiz up and down along here. We've got a nice, good-sized uh, headland of, uh, of grass to work with. So, make up another batch of, uh, of hay, and then from here we'll kind of do some of it with the loading wagon when we collect it, and some of it will bale and then shred the bales when we get there and see which is the quicker method. go so let's raise the mowers turn them off fold up and it is time for us to take this back to our depot get it cleaned put away and then we can start collecting our hay. All right, so back at the depot. Uh, get this place opened up. It's getting a bit dark as well, so we'll get the lights on. There we go. careful with this. There we go, that looks to be about right. Excellent. off. We don't get quite full coverage inside here with our, uh, yeah, with the reach of our pressure washer, but it does stretch far enough for us to be able to at least spray from a distance everything that's in here. So these first few pieces of equipment we can get right up next to, as you can see. But for our auto stacker, which is right on the end, we do kind of hit the limit. But we are still close enough to be able to clean it if we need to. And there we 
we go, that's the big M cleaned. So, uh, we're going to start off, we'll be back up here in a moment, uh, but we're going to start off using our brand new Big Bud 450, uh, which is, which one's the brand new one? The one on the end. There we go. We're going to go grab our loading wagon. And we're going to attack field four with this. And then we'll use the baler and auto stacker on field three. That's no, right, field two. So let's break out two new brand new pieces of equipment. Our brand new Big Bud 450 and our brand new forage wagon, loading wagon. Our, uh, nice little new combo here. Start grabbing that hay. So we've got this little messy patch just here. That's a little bit of a problem. We'll deal with that in a moment. Oops, I need to kind of turn this thing on first of all, don't I? Let's turn off those indicators as well. And there we go. So while it looks like we have a huge amount of hay on this field, we, we don't actually have quite as much as, as you might think. Obviously, this is native grass. This is uh, default grass, no fertilization. It's not on a plowable field. So it's the standard lowest amount that we could possibly get, the, you know, the smallest yield that we could get off this, off this grass. It's still a fair old amount. And uh, I think we'll definitely come away with uh, around 100,000 litres or so, if not more, off both of the two fields combined. But obviously, if this same amount of space was a workable grass field, then we would be looking at a considerably higher yield for grass that was fertilised all the way up. Uh, looks like I was making yet another conservative estimate. Uh, we're going to get, I think, <laughs> nearly 100,000 off, well, over 100,000 off this field alone. There we go, we're completely full, and uh, well, you can see how, how much we've covered and how much of the field we still have left to go. So, we're going to uh, follow the road around up past the barn all the way up the side of the map to our animal farm up there where our cows are and from there we'll obviously tip into our forage and chip silo so this is going to be a long drive i'll catch you when we get there so we're finally rounding the corner just gone past the barn there kind of rounding the corner at the top of the map here's our animal farm we just turn in here, just to get off the main road. It's still a long old track, and of course, only being able to go 19 miles an hour in a in a 450 does make it quite a long track. Yeah, we're talking a good few minutes up and down every time. This is the downside of uh, having to transport, you know, a limit of only 50,000 per you know per trip. It does seem a little bit inefficient in terms of the amount of time we spend travelling to the amount of time we spend collecting. This is why baling might be a, um, a better option. We can load up a couple of bale trailers and bring the whole lot up in one go. It takes a little longer to get everything loaded, but once it is loaded, we're in a pretty strong position. So I'm just going to reposition our mega mixer underneath the uh, mixing trough. There we go. We're going to need that for later when we mix up, mix, uh, mix up some TLR. Oops. Misjudged that corner slightly there. With the uh, tightness of that turn. Uh, 
And there we go. And this um, this new silo, you know, this replacement silo with its uh, loading ramp just here, plus the fact that we've rotated it round, you know, 90 degrees, makes it much, much easier to come in and drop product off and then drive off again, just like that. So uh, I'm very glad that I actually decided to go ahead and do that. It has made quite a big difference to sort of operations up here. But now I've got to make the long journey all the way back down again and continue shuttling uh, hay up and down this road. So uh, I'm going to get a lot of that done and then I'll probably check back in with you once I'm pretty much finished with that. So there we go, that's fill four finished. We're going to uh, just grab this little bit just here, do that line that's on field three, and then we'll switch over to bailing for the next part. Uh, why would it let me pick that up? Oh, I've got grass in here. Dump that little bit of grass out the back. I'll have to come and collect that later. So we should be able to pick up the hay now. Yep, there we go. You know what, I think I'm just going to carry on using our loading wagon rather than uh, breaking out all the baling gear. I think this will just be quicker overall to get it done, carry on like this. So I'm going to carry on scooping up like this on field two. And then once all this is collected up, we'll uh, then start looking after our animals a little bit taking care of them and uh, we've also got that wool sale to do as well don't forget so uh, hopefully we'll be able to make quite a nice bit of cash selling off that wool but for now more hay to collect So this is the last of the hay. It scooped up an awful lot more than I was initially expecting us to get. Uh, we're probably looking at around 300,000 litres. Which is a hell of a lot. I really didn't think we'd get quite that much. But, uh, yeah, it's all done. So we've got to run this back to the farm. Stick it in the uh, forage and chip silo. Uh, and from there, we'll make up some TMR, make sure that our uh, cows are topped off with everything that they need. Then we'll check in on the sheep, uh, and then when we finish checking in on the sheep, then we'll grab all that wool and we'll take it down to the spinnery, uh, which is just over there, and make a nice big pile of cash. We're going to have a lot of pallets of wool to sell. All right, so here at the farm, oops, make the turn. And let's see how much we've actually ended up with. So we had around about 70,000 or so, just under. Let's see where we're looking now. 340,000, so we weren't far off, were we? You know, 270,000 litres or so of straw, uh, sorry, of, of hay. That's quite a good, sizable amount, and that's really helped balance out 
amongst our other kind of materials that we have there as well. So uh, let's detach from that. Let's grab our mixer. Now, I'm pretty sure we don't have any TMR in stock already. Get connected up. Let's double check. Yeah, no TMR. Uh, but we have all the components that we need. We have silage. We have straw, which we could kind of use. And we also have the hay. Um, there is one thing I do need to do, actually. I need to pull this off so that anything that gets left over, we can tip back into our silo. So let's just park this out of the way. Uh, just here. That'll do. And now let's pull up our animal tab. So you can see our cows are low on pretty much everything. You know, we need straw, grass, silage and hay and power food and water as well. Our sheep obviously are running okay on, on food but are in definite need of water. So we'll do the water last because we can uh, transfer from one farm to the other. But let's mix up some bits and bobs. We'll start with the straw bedding. So let's fill this up with straw. See our uh, Lely Juno working away there. Now, one thing I don't understand why it keeps happening, but one problem I have had is the Lely Juno seems to go off on a weird angle. You can see that that's not running straight. It's really, really close there. And if it keeps doing this, it kind of keeps changing course. It's going to end up where it's way off to the side and not anywhere near the food trough. It always seems to happen really badly on this map. Uh, I have noticed it occasionally on other maps as well, but this one in particular, it seems to have a real issue with. And the number of times I've had to rescue a Lenny Juno from sort of over here, where it's got wedged up against something, you know, it just it does seem a little bit weird. I don't know why it keeps doing that. But you can see, look, it's drifting away from the side. It's very bizarre why it keeps doing that. I have to keep repositioning it. So let's get it straightened up again. That's about straight. It's certainly better than it was. Let's get it in position. And send her off. Oops, just turn the uh, tractor off there. Let's tip the straw. It's coming out the wrong side there. It is double sided, but uh, for some reason it wants to tip on the other side. I think we're just a little bit too close to the trough. Unless there's an option, let's uh, open up the help menu to choose which side. Oh yeah, tip side left, look. So we want tip side right, but we're done now anyway. So um, the remainder of this will go back into our uh, silo. There we go. What else do we need? We need uh, grass. And we also need to make our power food as well. So uh, we'll do the grass next. Now I do have grass bales for the sheep. Uh, but for the cows... Oh, this thing doesn't take grass, does it? forgot about that. Alright, so we'll do the TMR next. So... Uh, what I like to do is kind of like a 60-40, a 65-35 kind of split with the material when I make my TMR. So you don't need to use straw. Straw is kind of like a filler. Uh, so we need, with 64,000 litres, we're going to need, I think, around about 40,000 litres of hay. Maybe we could go just over 40,000, but we'll do with 40 to start. Let's see where we end up from there. Okay, and now we want to change that to silage. And 
there we go. Now we have our TMR mix. And yeah, we can go a little bit. 63 to 35, uh, 36, that's not too bad a ratio. Uh, but we can go a little bit you know, steeper on that ratio if we wanted to. So we could go to, say, 44,000 44, and do 20. And that would work quite nicely. Let's uh, tip this in. It should come out the right-hand side. Yep, there we go. So you can see our TMR and our silage hay bars both going up quite nicely. Going to have to do this a couple more times. And then once that's done, we'll obviously get the grass done and then the water as well. Then we'll move on to the sheep. So I'm going to keep mixing up some more TMR, get that food trough nice and full. And then we'll move on to the grass and then the water and then we'll move on to the sheep. And then we'll sell the wool. Okay, so this time I've got a mix of about 20,000 litres of silage and the rest in hay. And you can see we're at 31 and 68, 69. Uh, and it works. It's still a good mix. Uh, so this is a great way that you can kind of substitute. You know, both of those have the same <coughs> requirements. Minimum of about 25% uh, to a maximum of, I think, about 75%, uh, somewhere in that kind of region. Uh, but the great thing is you can mix and match, so you don't have to go 30% silage and 70% hay. You could do it the other way around. You could do 30% hay and 70% silage if you wanted to. So depending on what materials you've actually got in stock, it allows you to kind of switch things up a little bit. So... You don't have to stick to a, a rigid formula. You can mix and match. If you have a lot more of hay than you do of silage, then there's nothing to, to stop you from using hay as the main ingredient and then silage as the lesser ingredient. And if you're low on both hay and silage, there's nothing to stop you from throwing a little bit of straw in there as well to help flesh out the mix. So you do have some rather good options in that respect. So there we go, we're about 44,500. Let's uh, finish off with silage on this one. Of course, when you start getting really close to those limits, you do have to be very careful that you don't underdo it. And there we go, a nice, perfectly healthy mix there of 70% uh, and 30%. And I'm going to go and drop these in and continue the feed. Oh, and we've reached the maximum capacity of our feeding trough. So, uh, this TMR, we'll stick this into the silo, and we'll have this for the next time we need it. That filled up a lot quicker than I thought, a lot quicker than I'm used to, because I haven't used this uh, uh, Mega Mamoet on this map for you know, before. This is the first time I've used it, so... It really does mix up food a lot quicker. But there you can see our... Uh, power food bar and our silage bar is done so next up is the grass okay well we can put grass into our loading wagon which is what we're doing so we use this as the delivery method to uh, put grass into our into our food trough now we could tip it here into this food trough that you see right next to us uh, and it would be accepted, but I, I do like to use the separate food trough for grass if we have one available. So we'll uh, we'll make the trip over to the other placeable trough. But as I say, if we wanted to, we could tip it into there, and it would be accepted. There we go. That's fifty thousand liters. This might be all we need. Actually, we may possibly have to do a second one. I do find that the cows do tend to eat an awful lot of grass, more than the sheep. Uh, which surprises me, considering that's the only thing that the sheep eat. But uh, they do eat a larger volume in terms of numbers. So there you can see grass going in our trough. Let's take a look at our chart. And yeah, I think we're going to fill up before we run out. Yeah, there we go. We've still got 18,500 litres. So that's that done. So next up is the water. Let's uh, go and replenish or return this into the silo. Just take a quick trip over this chaff. Give it a little bit of a compaction. I'm looking forward to using that uh, manure spreader. 
you know, when we come to plant on field one. I think that could be uh, a lot of fun to use. So we'll just evacuate that out the back here. And once we're done with that, we're going to pull this out the way to here because we'll be needing to collect that and take that back to our farm uh, later once we're done. I'm going to very quickly park this back where it should be. So uh, I'll put this underneath the downpipe for our silo. There we go. Now let's go grab our water container. Tractor's getting a bit dirty. We could probably do it putting a pressure washer in up here, I suppose. We don't have one up here. There's a good way to clean off some of our equipment. Uh, I don't know if there's any water left in this. There's probably some. Yes, there's about 20,000 litres in here. So I've uh, got that unloading. You can see the water level going up on the right-hand side there. We may need a top-up. Hopefully we won't. Ah, look at that. Just excellent. So, we're going to take this over to the water area to refill it. There's a, a nice sort of pond at the top of uh, field two next to our sheep pen. We're going to go refill the tanker in there, then we're going to fill the sheep water trough, and then we'll do the sheep food trough. Uh, we'll have to bring up our wheel loader for that, so we can get those bales loaded in there. And then it'll be time to sell that wool and see just how much money we can make at the end of this day. Uh, and it looks as though we've got some rain on the way as well. You can see the weather icon has changed. Unusual to get weather changes like that this time of day in regular gameplay. I wonder if that's been affected by seasons as part of the code change to make the weather a little bit more unpredictable in regular play. Alright, so here's our water point. So we'll start filling up. There we go. And you can see the sheep pen's right there. So it's really, really handy for our animals to have this free source of water. Obviously, we do have a water tower on the main farm. And we've got that big reservoir behind it next to the chickens. But we do have to pay for the water on this map at that point. So uh, it's better for me to just come here. Especially when we, we start building up the numbers of animals that we have. They start going through quite a lot of water. So, you know, 32,000 litres at a time to fill these things up it's uh, it starts to add up quite quickly and there we go we're full so let's get our way back up here there we go Go fill up the the, uh, the water trough here. You see all of our bales are stacked up there quite nicely. We have got more that we are going to need to do as well. But we've got enough you know, hay, uh, grass bales to keep our sheep fed for quite some time. So while that's emptying, uh, we're going to quickly jump through all of our equipment until we can find this. Here we go. Let's detach the bucket. The bale claw is already sort of with the bales at the sheep farm. So we just need to literally drive this up, grab a couple of bales, drop them in, and then this can go back and uh, live back here in the BGA again. But we used to use a telehandler for this job and uh, uh, and that that and for loading bales onto our uh, you know the wool pallets onto our trailers and it was awkward with the pallet forks because the pallet forks for uh, wheel loaders and telehandlers are a lot thick well there isn't one for telehandlers but 
sorry, for wheel loaders, but for telehandlers, the pallet forks are quite thick in comparison to those of a front loader attachment for a tractor. So it made it really quite awkward trying to use the telehandler forks. And I tried playing about with the CSZ pack you know, ones, and uh, and then obviously we got the mod for the forklift, and that just made such a huge difference. It was a real game changer. So um, you know, once I started using that, it was a case of I don't really need the telehandler anymore because I can do the bail work with a wheel loader. So why have an expensive piece of equipment that's just costing us money for a job that we already have a piece of equipment that can do that job? It just didn't make any sense. So there we go. Uh, that's actually more grass than we needed. By a bale, by the look of it. Yes. So uh, we'll leave that there for now. Um, we can always come back in and get that later if we need to. But let's drop the claw off. Actually, I'll just park here like this. I'll probably grab that bale and stack it back over here uh, off camera. Uh, let's make our way over to our forklift. Let's get the last of those pallets of wool loaded up. And then we can do our big, big wool sell-off. So we've got quite a bit of wool here, as you can see. Now I find the easiest way to do this is simply like this. Just lower the forks down enough. Drive through slowly and carefully. And then immediately lift and pull. They will separate ever so slightly, but as long as you're careful, they're generally pretty good. And so we need to lift a bit higher. And then you can see that separation again. You can always just give them a little nudge if you need to. Of course you need to be careful of the fact that the forks need to stick out the back. And then just try and line them up relatively square to the trailer. And there we go, nice and simple. Two pallets loaded really quick and easily. And it's a little bit harder over here because we have that partial pallet. I'm going to leave that partial pallet alone, but I am going to grab the other two. So this is where it's going to get a little bit trickier. So what I'm going to try and do is grab the one nearest the fence first. bit strange that the way the pallets you know spawn inside this this box you'd expect them to spawn three uh, three along as opposed to three uh, three wide but uh, you know, especially given the shape and markings of this box but yeah you know, they don't it's a little bit you know odd and it does make it a little bit tricky sometimes to really get in and get this uh, row of pallets by the fence but once you're used to it it's not too bad So, just lower and push in. Oh, we're off centre. Let's raise that up a touch. There we go. Drop it down. We'll leave that pasture pallet there. The great demand will last for uh, several more hours yet. So I can always come back with uh, more wool later to sell while we're getting this great demand price of over 5,000, which is, you know, on hard, a very good price indeed. Of course, if we weren't running two, two trailers, then it could be problematic trying to do a mass sell you know, outside of a great demand window. Because we have this great demand window, we can actually just sell everything like this 
you know, in stages if we want to. We're going to sell it all in one go. Oh, actually, we do need this still. We need the... Uh, we need the forklift because we need to load the hook. So this is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to widen the forks for this. And you need to do it off center because of the point of balance, the uh, center of gravity of the uh, of the attachment. So you need to kind of be about here because this is where you know, more there's more weight at, at this side than there is the other side. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to drive this underneath and then try and lower onto it that way. Obviously, if you don't, if you've updated your BSM hooklift truck, you can't do this anymore. It's no longer an option. Which is a little sad because I, uh, I, I really like the concept of doing this. You know, I like that it gives you just another, you know, another use for your Terra variant. Just catching on something. There we go. So we'll try and lower this down. There we go. Slide out. And that's probably the easiest <laughs> it could possibly have been in my attempts to show you this. It can get really, really tricky. Actually, I need to turn the engine off on that. There we go. So there we go, we now have a hooklift Terra variant. So I'm going to uh, extend the arm out and grab this stored set of uh, wall pallets. And then we'll grab the hooklift trailer and we'll use that to load up the, uh, the second of these bale trailers just simply because of the space that's needed. There we go. Can get a little bit wobbly. Just because it creates quite a high center of gravity on the vehicle. But generally it's not too bad. So now we're hooked up to our ITR trailer. There we go. And off we go to sell some wool. So here we are at the spinnery. Now, because we have two trailers, we can actually sell all of this in one single go because the wool will gradually disappear from the trailer but we have loads of pallets on each one so there's nothing to stop us from doing this if we want if we wanted to sell all in one go you can see the money it's going down there it's a really small box so it might be a little bit tricky But in theory, we could detach from this. And then we can do this and park the next one next to it as well. And do a double sell. You can see there, we've got wool disappearing from that pallet. Where is the wool disappearing from on the other one? I don't think, I think it might have stopped on the other one. It is, it's doing pallet at a time look, uh, or trailer at a time, so it's doing the one that we're loaded on. Now it's selling from the underneath. <laughs> Wasn't expecting it to do that, I thought it would sell both sets of pallets at the same time, but it stopped selling one trailer to deal with the other one first. Interesting. 
But the same theory applies. You know, once it's finished with this one, it'll immediately start selling from the next one as well. There shouldn't be a break between the uh, you know, between the selling, so it should all go through at a single price. Obviously, this is a great demand, so it doesn't matter on this one if there is a break. But for future, and there you go. See, it's, it just switched back to the other one again. That's that's odd the way it's choosing to sell some of these pallets. Very odd. Now we're back on the on the park trailer again. I'm not entirely sure why it's doing it like this, but there you go. That's a bit strange. Well, let's uh, let's skip ahead and see how much we end up with once all of this wool is sold. Alright, there we go. It's the first trailer completely sold. Just getting the last little bits off the second one. How much are we going to make? Two hundred and eighty-one thousand and eighty-four. Uh, that is a huge amount for a wool sale. That's a really, really nice amount of cash. Wonderful. Right. Uh, that's it then for the end of this episode. We've uh, made like, quite a bit of hay. We've sold all of our wool. We've fed our animals completely and fully. They're now uh, nicely stocked up for the next six days. So next time out, we'll uh, turn our attention to our fields. We'll start prepping them for you know another round of planting. And once we start getting that in place and we get those fields planted, we'll turn our attention to our silos, our bunker silos in the BGA, and we'll start selling off all of that, uh, all of that silage that we have there, that eight million liters or so. So, thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and we'll be back with some more Big Bud Farm very soon.